Namaskar and welcome to India This Week. Our top story this week is a report on the expulsion of the senior Congress leader, Mr. Arjun Singh, and the attempts by the Congress party to refurbish its image in the light of the various political developments. The recent expansion of the Narsimha Rao cabinet is seen by political analysts as an effort to take over the political initiative by the Prime Minister. India This Week gives you an exclusive report as to what Mr. Arjun Singh's expulsion and other political moves mean to the Congress party. But first, the other headlines of the week. An estimated 75% of the voters in 147 constituencies of Maharashtra cast their ballots on Thursday in the first phase of assembly elections in the state. The polling covered 19 districts of Vidarbha and Maratwada regions. The second phase of polling in the remaining 139 assembly segments took place this Sunday. The main contenders in these elections are the incumbent ruling party, the Congress, and the Bharatiya Janata Party Shiv Sena Alliance. The counting of votes will start on the 11th of next month. In Uttar Pradesh, the Samajwadi Party, Bahujan Samaj Party's minority coalition, government's motion of thanks to the governor, Mr. Motilal Vora, was passed by a majority of 58 votes this Wednesday. The opposition Bharatiya Janata Party sponsored amendment was defeated and the Congress members abstained from voting. Later, the state's chief minister, Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav, asserted in Lucknow that as promised by him, he has proved his majority on the floor of the House. A day earlier, his government's vote on account was also passed by the UP Legislative Assembly. Despite the successful passage of these motions, the state units of the BJP and the Congress accused the ruling coalition of procedural irregularities. The United States administration admitted this week that weapons and funds from Pakistan continue to go to the militants in Jammu and Kashmir, despite Islamabad's assurances to the contrary. Testifying before the Congressional Subcommittee on Asia-Pacific Affairs in Washington, the United States Assistant Secretary of State, Ms. Robin Raphael, said that Pakistan had promised to stop material support to the militants, but its steps to prevent cross-border support were not perfect. Ms. Raphael stated that given the amount of money and guns available in the valley, it would not surprise the United States administration to know that Muslim extremist elements had contributed to their coffers. She also confirmed that Washington had taken up this matter with Pakistan several times. The expulsion of the former Union Minister for Human Resource Development, Mr. Arjun Singh, from the primary membership of the Congress Party for six years this Tuesday, brought into focus various questions related to the future of the ruling party and the Union government. The decision to expel Mr. Arjun Singh was taken by the majority of the party's six-member disciplinary action committee, headed by the senior Congress leader and former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. K. Vijay Bhaskara Reddy. Although all other members of the committee were in favour of the expulsion, Mr. A.K. Antony argued against the decision. Later, the All India Congress Committee General Secretary, Mr. Janardhan Pujari, announced the decision to the media. The committee, in exercise of its powers, delegated to it by the Congress Working Committee, decided to remove Sri Arjun Singh from the primary membership of the Congress for six years, the Disciplinary Action Committee had examined Mr. Arjun Singh's reply to the 13-point charge sheet and found it untenable. The committee concluded that Mr. Singh had committed what it called serious breach of discipline inasmuch as he has deliberately acted and carried on propaganda against the programs and decisions of the Congress and has further deliberately acted in a way calculated to lower the prestige of the party. The chairman of the committee, Mr. K. Vijay Bhaskar Reddy, justified the step taken by them. All the issues that he has raised were discussed in the cabinet so many times, a working committee so many times, and these are part of the decisions. Knowing all these things, if he goes out and goes on criticizing the government and prime minister's activities, I don't think any party will tolerate such things. Reacting to the move made against him, Mr. Arjun Singh ruled out the possibility of floating a new party and claimed that he was still a worker of the Congress. Mm -hmm. Earlier, Mr. Singh had resigned as a cabinet minister on the 24th of December last year after the ruling party had suffered defeats in the Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Sikkim Assembly elections. He had demanded revamping of the party as well as the government to refurbish their image and had accused the top leadership of certain lapses. Consequently, the party high command had sought explanation about his critical remarks against the leadership. 
Most Congress leaders welcome the expulsion of Mr. Arjun Singh because in their view, his continuation in the party would have encouraged indiscipline and dented the image of the party at a time when it is preparing to face crucial assembly elections in six states. Senior leaders were almost unanimous in maintaining that the expulsion of Mr. Singh would not have any adverse bearing on the party's fortunes in the forthcoming assembly polls. The expulsion of Mr. Arjun Singh will not have any significant uh, effect on the poll prospects or the, I mean, in the party. He being a leader, he may have some supporters here and there, but doesn't mean that it will have uh, any significant effect on the working of the party or uh, the poll prospects. Some Congress leaders specifically dismissed the likelihood of a split in the party in the wake of the expulsion. There is no question of split. That it can't be. It is, uh, mm, but people will realize now that the, the, the ACC is President and the working committee is thinking of maintaining discipline in the party. That will have a good effect. Media observers contend that even in Mr. Arjun Singh's home state, Madhya Pradesh, there is little likelihood of any major impact because of the new development. And substantial sections of the party would still abide by the Congress leadership's decisions. A veteran leader like Mr. Singh, who had such a tremendous track record in Madhya Pradesh, he has, still has some support. But I think that support is not as strong as before. As part of the Congress High Command strategy to face new political challenges, the Prime Minister, Mr. P.V. Narasimha Rao, expanded his Council of Ministers this Thursday and effected a minor reshuffle in the government on Friday. Mr. Pranab Mukherjee has taken over as the new External Affairs Minister, while Mr. Madhav Rao Sindhya was allotted the Ministry for Human Resource Development. Mr. Ajit Singh was appointed as the Food Minister, Mr. Bhuta Singh designated as a Civil Supplies Minister and Mr. P. Chidambaram named as the Minister of State for Commerce. These changes have been interpreted as the leadership's way of giving representation to the various regions and groups of people in the Union Government. With the appointment of Mr. Madhav Singh Solanki as the All India Congress Committee's General Secretary this Friday, the restructuring of the party organization has also begun. The Prime Minister has already announced that a further expansion of his cabinet is on the cards. Commentators are of the opinion that these moves may further blunt the edge of developments which culminated in the expulsion of Mr. Arjun Singh. While the new developments have their significance, analysts maintain that it is the oncoming budget session and the results of the six assembly elections which will chart out the agenda of the ruling party as well as of the government. The impressive growth in the automotive sector this year has meant that more and more foreign companies are coming to India with tie-ups and joint ventures. This week, the LML Group from Kanpur signed an ambitious $80 million expansion and diversification plan with Piaggio of Italy to manufacture a range of scooter models. The building of additional capacity will allow LML to supply scooter parts to other Piaggio licensees around the world, as well as challenge the domination of Bajaj scooters in the domestic market. India This Week gives you an exclusive report on the scooter industry. At first, the other business headlines of the week and our regular stock watch. The Reserve Bank of India this week raised the ceiling on bank term deposits from the previous level of 10% to 11%. In reaction, senior Indian bank officials were of the view that the stage has been set for a hike in prime bank lending rates. A RBI press release said that the objective of the deposit rate hike was to help banks evolve a stable asset liability balance and to ensure that deposit rates remained attractive. The 11th Indian Engineering Trade Fair was inaugurated at the capital's sprawling Pragati Maidan on Saturday by the President of India, Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma, and the President of Italy, Mr. Oscar Luigi Scalfaro. IETF Dubbed as the biggest fair by its organizers, the Confederation of Indian Industry has over 1,500 exhibitors from over 30 countries with wide representation from sectors as diverse as food processing, footwear and interior decoration. Italy is the partner country. The World Bank has cleared a $700 million financial sector loan package for India. The final negotiations were concluded in Washington this week. 
The loan will assist India in financial liberalization, institutional development and capital restructuring of public sector commercial banks and integration into the capital market. Share prices continued to slip through the week as investment institutions withdrew support and broker operators began to sell heavily. The Bombay Sensitive Index opened on Monday at 3620.76 points and closed on Friday at 3522.14 points. It looked every bit a fashion pageant show with its customary dose of laser beams, smoke effects and high decibel music. But the glittering models on the ramp this time were the trendy, state-of-the-art scooters from the stable of the Italian two-wheeler giant Piaggio. And the occasion, the signing of a new joint venture agreement between old partners Piaggio and Kanpur-based LML India tie-up that promises to alter the equations in the world's largest scooter market sweepstakes, dominated for the past two decades by the ubiquitous Bajaj. The new agreement envisages a 200 crore rupee or 68 million dollar investment over the next three years, increasing LML's capacity threefold, from 200,000 scooters per year at present to 600,000 scooters per year in the next three years. More importantly, it will make the company's scooter plant the largest in the world. As part of the deal, at least 10 new Piaggio models, many of which were unveiled in the special preview, will be added to the LML's range in the forthcoming period, offering consumers a greater freedom and variety to choose from. You have to focus and to address consumer needs in a more defined way and uh, to give him everything, offer everything, and let him choose rather than to say you have to buy this. The company is hoping that the new models will help firmly establish its rising presence on the Indian roads. Already the success of its latest offering, Select, has contributed to LML's impressive current 18% market share. But grabbing a bigger chunk would be a more difficult proposition, given that time-tested Bajaj still enjoys a virtual hegemony at 72%, while LML's emerging competitor, Kinetic Honda, is stepping on the gas at 10%. Both Bajaj and Honda plan to introduce more models in the near term. But is the Indian customer ready for the deluge? Definitely yes, say experts, who point out that the 3,500 crore rupee or $1,160 million two-wheeler market comprising of scooters and motorcycles is at present growing at 20% a year. The two-wheel industry, the average growth rate has been fairly impressive compared to what it was a couple of years ago. And uh, today the growth rate is well above over 20%. That may not sustain, but even a steady 15-20% seems to be possible. And in that sense, the potential for two-wheelers will remain very good in this country. But industry sources point out that along with growth, the Indian scooter market has also gradually undergone segmentation, allowing the emergence of product niches with more individuality and style. We know that uh, Indian uh, customers uh, are expressing uh, many different needs. Uh, there are people who want a scooter which is long-lasting, uh, very fuel efficient, uh, very mature in its design. There are people who want uh, more sport-oriented, uh, more individualistic design. Look at this one, for example. There are people who want uh, more comfort. There are people who want uh, gears and people who want variators, people who want two strokes, people who want four strokes. But the maturing of the Indian scooter market, in effect, could spur a higher premium on quality and a rising demand for better and newer products. These, in turn, will require sophisticated technologies and ongoing research and development. And none of it will come to local companies, say experts, barring a foreign tie-up with a global giant like Piaggio or Honda. Now what's going to become more and more important for two-wheelers and for the automobile industry per se is that uh, you need to come up with new products, with better products, and to keep improving your products as competition hots up. And for that, what you really need is a very good research and development and R&D setup. If you don't have that, if you can't design your own product, you need foreign tie-ups to survive, otherwise there's no choice.
On the flip side, India is seen to offer the infrastructure and the technological capacity for scooter domos to source their components for worldwide distribution. We believe that India has also all the technological capacity to produce these new technologies, not only for India, but also globally to be a base for, as a good component manufacturer for international operations of Piaggio. Small wonder that Piaggio has ranked India as a priority above China and Indonesia, sensing the country's opportunities as an evolving and growing market with its added potential of becoming a global ancillary base. With more two-wheeler giants set to follow the Piaggio path, Indian scooters could become the talking point in the showrooms of the world. The scooter industry getting ready to conquer foreign shores. Rakesh Roshan, son of the noted film composer and music director Roshan, never really made it big as an actor in Bollywood. And like many before him, he turned to film direction. His first big hit was Khun Bhari Mang, starring Rekha. Now, Rakesh Roshan has come up with a bigger hit, Karan Arjun, starring Shah Rukh Khan and Kajol. India This Week gives you a profile of this actor-director. But before that, the other headlines from the world of arts and entertainment. In a landmark verdict, the Supreme Court this week asked the Centre to establish an independent autonomous public authority to rescue the Indian electronic media from government monopoly and bureaucratic control. It further ruled that no individual or organization had an absolute right to telecast programs from the country by bringing in foreign partners and equipment. Allowing foreign agencies to telecast from Indian soil with their equipment would amount to allowing private telecast stations, it added. The media giant, the India Today group, entered the world of art by opening Art Today, a swank gallery in the heart of the capital last week. The inauguration with an informal get-together of painters also included a display of their eminent works. Art Today, promoted by publishers Arun Puri and Rekha Puri, will be run on professional lines and would aim to showcase the best of traditional and contemporary Indian art and sculpture. The promoters also hope to curate shows which will define new parameters as also produce international class publications. Art Today is the ninth gallery to spring up in the capital in the past six years. Rakesh, who was languishing in oblivion after the mediocre performance of his recent directorial ventures, has bounced back. And while his experience of the industry made him certain that he had a winner on his hands, he is candid in his admission that box office success depends on several factors other than a film being good. I could only make a good film, like I made for previous films also. But success is not in our hands. Success is something God gives. Luck plays a very big part. Audience plays a very big part. When I signed Ajay Devgan, who was there before in this film, in place of Salman, the film, from the starter's point of view, was not very big. Uh, in, in very big, I would say it was a film with newcomers. But the mounting was going to be very big. But the film progressed, even they progressed. And on the day of the release, even they were superstars. I did give successful films, but then I didn't get good films after that. Maybe something wrong was something wrong in my promotion. Maybe luck also counts a lot. One is a good film, which need not be a box office hit. One is a box office hit. That film need not be a good film. But I was lucky in Khudgas in my very first venture that it was a, people appreciated the film also and it did very good business also. Rakesh Roshan's films have an unusual quality in the Bollywood melee. They are usually marked with a very strong story. It took me a long time. See, copying something is different. Getting inspired by a subject and to Indianize it and to give it the same promotion to convince the audience a wife killing her husband was a very difficult task. It was a challenge for me. The success of Karan Arjun augurs well for the average cine enthusiast eager for good, wholesome entertainment from Bollywood, for it has no doubt provided Rakesh Roshan with a renewed fervor to do films. With a couple of new films already on the floor, it remains to be seen if he is able to repeat the magic. Nevertheless, one thing is certain, 
that this talented director will come up with many more entertaining offerings for his vast audience. Rakesh Roshan, not so successful as an actor, but now a hit director. That is all we have for you this week. And from all of us in the India This Week team, thank you and Namaskar. Namaskar.